Ted Nugent, where's Ted Nugent? Where's Ted? Huh? Look at you. You doing well? You are a handsome devil. Thank you. Great job, Ted. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. And now, it's time for Ted Nugent's Spirit Campfire with John Brankus. It's the physics of spirituality with attitude. Powered by Patriot Mobile. Switch now. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Ted. John, does that sound as Christmas cheery there as it does here? I have a I have a resonating sonic bombast. Hello, everybody. My name is Ted Nugent, and this is our spirit campfire. And this is my sidekick, my blood brother, my soul brother, my American shit kicker partner in all things spirit campfire crime. I give you his brinkusness. Wow, <laughs> brinkusness. I like that. Uh, by the way, you know that sound that is actually the soundtrack to the North Pole that you were just playing. It is. You know, it's kind of cute. A lot of people say, you should do a Christmas album. I did years ago. They did this uh, uh, compilation by a bunch of guitar players called Merry Axmas. And even though I posted on my Facebook just a little while ago, right after I promoted the Spirit Campfire for tonight. Today is uh, December 21. Is that right? Only four more days until it's Christmas. It's the shortest right? day of the year. Well, John, I want to tell you, I am bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, cock-locked, and ready to rock the Glock and other assorted hardware. Uh, here it is. I, you know, you hear me use superlatives all the time. It's always mm -hmm. hyperbole and over-the-top intensity and gonzo. It's actually like everything I do is like gonzo. In fact, it's like double life gonzo. Right. And I barely, I barely find the syllabic emphasis to adequately express. By the way, I hope somebody's writing this down because I'm, I'm, I'm writing down syllabic. But syllabic uh, resonance. <laughs> To adequately describe, even in Clusterfuck 2020, my mountaintop of happiness, I spend time with the greatest people, the people that came from my birthday hunt. I was just down in Uvalde and Canipa and Sanibel with Greg Mosing and Congressman uh, Jeff Duncan and, uh, and Steve and, and Jeff's son Parker and, and, and Will, uh, uh, Greg's buddy Will and Greg's ranch manager Will and Gary and my buddy Bob Bohannon, who's my Spirit of the Wild VidCam dude. John. Yeah. <sighs> The people in Uvalde and Canipa, we were able to joke with them and, and tease and, and, and have fun. And everybody's laughing. Of course, almost everybody had a mask on except me. Why would you want to cover this up? This is, this is like a gift from God. I think it's against the law for me to wear a mask. I should probably shave. In fact, in an upcoming show, John, I'm going to get my razor and shave live on the Spirit Camp first. So I'm bringing... We exactly. always emphasize positive spirit, positive energy, love, kindness, goodwill, decency, a great, great buoyancy. Yep. Even as dumb as the world gets, as corrupt and ugly as it gets every day, I get, John, I get happier every day. I killed eight deer with my bow and arrow and my GA precision. In fact, I'm, I'm starting to hunt. With this Cimarron Arms, it's an old cowboy double. Wow, is that revolver. a 44? No, it's a 10 millimeter Cimarron Arms out of uh, Fredericksburg, uh, Texas. Here, they built me this old cowboy gun. It's a double action, which means you have to yep. a single action. I mean, which means you have to pull the hammer back because the trigger has one action, dropping the hammer, and it's in 10 millimeter. My arrows out of my Matthews bows, John. Mm. In fact, you want to know the last eight arrows I shot? Brinkus, I, I bet you killed eight swamp donkeys with eight arrows. And big bucks. I mean, big, big, great <laughs> bucks. There, it, the, I was in whitetail epicenter. But let me tell you, I want to emphasize, thank you, Greg. Thank you, everybody there. Thank you, Tim and Ashley and Calvin. And thank you, Joe Arbick and my son, Toby and Linda. And, of course, Herbert and Courtney and you, John, and Shemaine yep. and my dogs. But I didn't shoot 
many of my arrows this year. I knew I had the bow in my hand. I had a Matthews, and I drew back to full draw. But, John, mm -hmm. I take no responsibility for all the disconnected pump stations that I have achieved this year. When I come to full draw, Jesus comes down, oh boy. takes my arrow off the bow, <laughs> and stabs every animal. Funny. Anatomically perfect. So I'm, I, you know, you can be in the lap of God, but as I've said before, I actually reside in the cleavage of God. So it's a little more comfortable than the lap. And I'm having the time of my life, and I can't wait till you, you come to Spirit Wild Ranch and witness not just the wildlife and the beauty and the intensity, but the the damn people are the best people in the world. Right. You know what's interesting, Ted is. You always talk about the mystical flight of the arrow, but yes. th that it's mystery has been solved. It is Jesus. <laughs> so, the mystical you know flight of the arrow church, is no right Jesus. mystical. At, ch at church, they get rather uh, vociferous. They get rather loud and outrageous. Right. Praise Jesus. Well, when I'm in my tree stand, a big I praise Jesus every time I you look over an arrow. Oh, thank you. I go. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That was a good stab. You stabbed that big buck perfectly, Jesus. Thank you. So let's emphasize the conclusion, even though there's no conclusion. I'm not even warmed up yet, Brankus. Uh, no, we donate, we donate so much sacred, organic, natural, nutritious, delicious yep. medicine to so many needy families and charities this year. It's not just the Nugent tribe. Everybody yeah. across the land. So if people are wondering, in this clusterfuck of 2020, how does Nugent keep his sanity? I surround myself with a tsunami, a whirlwind, a, a vortex of great energy and positive people, man. Hence the campfire. Now, I want it to is. Exactly. Hence the campfire. As yes. messed up as 2020 is, it gave birth to the campfire. That's if 2020 true. didn't happen the way that it did, the campfire wouldn't exist. Uh, I'll tell you, so I want to thank everybody because a lot of those people watch the Spirit Campfire and Dave from Pennsylvania and all the guys at my birthday, and we got a bunch of hunters coming in for the New Year's yeah. Eve party. And uh, thank you, everybody. I mean, I still fight the fight, and I'm, I'm angered, and I'm heartbroken often because of the dishonesty that we're surrounded by in our an election that is just so corrupt, and the, the, the government and the media and academia and Hollywood, is, they're, they're as ugly as ugly can be and i fight that ugliness and i i i'm mm. hurt by that ugliness and angered by that ugliness but then i get the hell out of there and i talk to jesus and he helps guide my arrows home so that's right. the secret that's right. to my happiness well, i want we got uh we got to do some uh, housekeeping here first of all we know that your upcoming album you said you wanted to name it handsome devil handsome devil after, bro after the presidential decree uh, I, and I think it's just natural. I think it's just instinctive. I mean, who wouldn't call the Ted Nugent who would it? handsome devil? Exactly. So Ted Nugent handsome de devil. I have uh, a suggestion. I think you should put out just the lyrics as maybe a poetry book and call it syllabic opera. Syllabic opera is a syllabic ballet, so to speak. Or a syllabic a ballet. A lexiconic syllabic. ballet. That's right. So the word of the hour is syllabic. Syllabic and, and lexiconic, I think. So anyhow, tonight's Spirit Campfire, John, I think I speak for you sometimes. That's I think right. most of the time. Number one, Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you for all the, the bombardment. Thank you, Greg. Thank the people at Cameo. All these people are getting a hold of me through this new application called Cameo. I've done like, I don't know, 30 or 38 or 40 of them. And these children have me say thank you to their Marine dad or their Army dad or their or their sister that's in the, the Air Force or just a guy that finally retired after working his ass off for 70 years. I'm telling you, this new Cameo thing that I do, I do a personal message and I do an elongated one. Can you imagine, John, that yeah. Ted Nugent actually becomes verbose on occasion is this mm, every now and then every now and then. but anyhow thank you for all the cameos um by the way let me and, and all the autograph flags uh tim and ashley have had so many requests that now old west antiques at yahoo.com you can get this autographed don't tread flag from oldwestantiques.com along with uh, a don't tread on me. But I'm gonna, we're gonna have John Wayne Walding, a great friend, a great hero, a soul brother, a blood brother, a warrior. But let me start off and I'll, I'll roll the ball to you now, John. I'll shut, the, mm -hmm. I'll shut up in a second. But I would ask you, John Brankus, you're a thoughtful guy, you're a critical thinker. 
I've posed this question to many people recently, and I get a blank stare. It, it completely throws them, but it won't throw you. And I will ask a simple question to a simple man. Nope. John, how many states is your First Amendment good in? Hmm. Well, I think the answer to that is should be 50, or you could say it's, it is valid in one, the state of being. The best answer I've received yet, by the way. So Thank do you. you have your paperwork on you? Have you got your government-issued permit? I, I do. I have, I have my constitution right here, actually. That it's right here. Just break us. You deserve me. You, you and I are on a wavelength of truth, logic, and common sense. Yeah. Do you know when I ask that question to friends and people I really respect, some really smart, successful people, but they've been alive for a long time, and the government and powers that corrupt be have turned the water pot slowly warmer and warmer. And I ask people, how many states is your First Amendment good in? And they literally go, oh, uh, uh, um, the, my hurt. Um, and I go, God, man, dear God, man, Good God. it's an American right. There's 50 <laughs> states in America. <laughs> Spit it out. Tell me it's good in 50 states. By the way, the conclusion, and even though there never is one, is that you don't need paperwork for your First Amendment. All your rights, your choosing of religion or not, your freedom of speech, your privacy with your papers and your stuff, yeah. and the right to assemble is good in, in every state without paperwork. So is the Second Amendment. And those that say otherwise are violating their oath and they have infringed. I turn it over to you, Brinkus. That's right. Listen, I kind of do like my answer of one state, the state of being. State of being. my, Especially my individual being, because those are my individual rights. Your individual being. Yes. That's right. That's right. All right. So I want to do a quick uh, shout out because we have some incredible people of course, who have joined the campfire. First of all, everyone who's in any chat room, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook or some other platform, make sure you like, give a heart, give a thumbs up right now. That's the only way to try to circumvent the uh, big tech, you know, big tech crazies is to like, hey, let everybody know that we're on. We will be on a different platform come uh, turn of the year and we'll let you give you more details about that. Um, but listen, right now, Ted, we have Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha! Oh, great in song by, uh, 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 great song by Mo Moby Grape, the song Omaha. We're going to play the song Omaha by Moby Grape, killer song. We're going to play that. We've got New York, of course, in the room. Uh, New York, great people in New York. Great people in New York. We have great people in New York who are all pissed off. I saw an article about um, banning Cuomo from all restaurants. <laughs> I thought yeah, that I was... I think turn about his fair Cuomo. play, I guess. I think we should ban Cuomo from the human race because he doesn't. Ah, uh, easy, too far. Yep. Restaurants first. <laughs> How about that? Oh, I'm going to turn the heat up slowly. Yes, that's right. Exactly. You got to turn it up slowly. Like restaurants first. Don't get don't get that far. Playing into their hands. So listen, uh, we got South Dakota. The best. Oh, we also had high from the land of Lincoln. You're yes, great people. Illinois is not the mayor of of Chicago. <laughs> that, that's right. Um, we have New Jersey. Love it. We've great got state, the Garden State. Georgia. Did you know that there is a rally today in Georgia with Ivanka Trump right right down the street from me? Yeah. Right here, right in northern Georgia. Ivanka They're not Trump giving up. They will and, not uh, give up. We, anybody who's in Georgia, you got to get out and you got to vote. Trust me. There is a, there, like, the, if you don't vote in Georgia, you got to just move because you got to vote yeah. because somehow some craziness is going on. And if everybody votes, I think it's all going to be, it's all going to work out just fine. Um, all right. We also have uh, Ted, as always, Kentucky and New Zealand. New Zealand. I, you know, I, I oh. vowed, I, I never vow because I never say never, but it's so unlikely that I will ever fly that far ever again so new zealand i love you australia i love you europe i love you great britain ireland i love you i love you all but i'm not coming if you want to rock your balls off i me and jason and greg god bless these guys and the greatest crew in the world playing the greatest songs in the world with the greatest guitar tone in the history of the mankind you have to come to america and by the way john 
Yeah. On last year's tour and many, many tours, I meet people that come over just for the tour from Japan, from Ireland, from Absolutely. Sweden, from Belgium, from uh, all over Europe. So thank you for that dedication. I, I actually, genuinely, my whole crew thanks you for that. Now, do, you, know, you do know that when you enter America and they're giving out the pamphlets of things to do, you know, prior to 2020, everything's locked down. But prior to that, they're handing out pamphlets and saying, hey, maybe you should go to Disney World. Hey, maybe you should go see the Statue of Liberty. Also included in that is, hey, maybe you should go to a Ted Nugent concert. Yeah, if you really want to feel the essence of the spirit of America, none of those other places will deliver it anywhere, anywhere near close as me and Greg and Jason. That's right. That's right. So we have uh, we have Evansville, uh, Indiana. We've got uh, Louisiana. Where my daughter Heather was born. Yep. Yep. We've got, it says, God, Guns, and Guts, Louisiana. Like yes, that. the Sportsman's Paradise. That's where Greg Mosin is from. And that's where Jason from uh, 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 Federal and CCI Ammo and Remington Ammo. Remington Ammo, by the way. Uh, I'm filling all my stuff with Remington God. Ammo. He, he was in Louisiana at a place called uh, Something Break. The right. duck hunting epicenter. See, I have a relationship with every city you could possibly mention. I Hey, uh, Ted, here's a good question. Robin uh, in the Facebook room wants to know this. President Trump called on people to go to D.C. in March on January 6th. Is Ted Nugent going to be there? You know, I'm going to do my damnedest. I haven't committed to it because I've already got hunters coming in. I got paid people that are relying on me to provide a service. They've already paid. Um, if I can... If I can adapt and get them to swing their schedule, I will be there wrapped in an American flag and both middle fingers on fire. You and I, dude, that would be amazing. We should do a show from there. Oh, yes. That would be amazing. You know, I'm right there. I'll just drive up. It's not far. And so, by the way, I my name is Ted Nugent, and I love President Trump. And my name is Ted Nugent, and examining all the data, all the evidence possible, I am convinced that President Trump won by a landslide. You know, it's like giving Joe Biden the Kentucky Derby win, even though he never got out of the stall. He didn't even run. He didn't even do anything. And when he did get out of the <laughs> stall, he tripped and fell. And they, yeah. they gave him the win. The win. I, it, this is so heartbreaking. And so many people are just heartbroken, John. So, you know, the, the thing is, is as a registered independent, a free thinking individual, more libertarian than anything, I would say this. In uh, 2000, when uh, Bush v. Gore was happening in Florida, right. I'm, a, I'm a relatively skeptical person. I sat back and I'm like, so I like I skepticism. You know what? I said the guy running for for president, his brother is the governor of the state that's in contention. Now, I don't know anything other than what people have, have seen on the news and what, what I can read. But all I'm saying is, regardless of who actually won that state, it just felt unsettling to me because it was like there was no way Bush was going to lose Florida. No way. I mean, going into it, I'm like, there's just no way he can. So whether or not he did or did not, I'm just saying it felt unsettling. And now to say that to say that Joe Biden received more votes than anybody in his, in the history at any point in time, and he didn't do anything as a registered independent, all I'm saying is something just feels unsettling about that. I think That's the word I'm you're looking for is unbelievable, as in as in yeah. as in <laughs> not believing, as in not. I mean, listen, in, nothing in adds up. Oh, you're a homer. Oh my God, you're all. I'm saying. I'm saying. I felt the same way about Florida with W. I yeah. was like, look, the guy's brother is the governor. You think he's just going to say, well, let the best man win? I'm like, that's not how it works. It just isn't. So I'm like, that felt a little unsettling to me. And this feels a little unsettling to me. And I think if everybody opens their eyes and says, you know what? Did Obama, who amassed these massive crowds, I mean, the enthusiasm was off the charts. And I understand why he was really articulate. Yes, he, was a, he was an incredible speaker, and he pushed all the right buttons. Unfortunately, he didn't walk the walk. He didn't walk yes, the walk. he deserved those crowds because he looked like hope. He sounded like hope. He, he did. resonated hope, even though it was a scam. And how many people do you know who, who, have, who will say to this day, I voted for him because I wanted to be part of history? Yes. And that was fine. That's great. I, no I can't fault with that. anybody for that. And when Obama at the time received more votes than any other pre any other candidate in history, I'm like, that's about right. It I made said, sense. 
It made total sense. And no one was like, oh my God, he stole this election. He worked his ass off. Yeah. He worked his ass off. They had an incredible ground game. He was a groundbreaking candidate. And even as much as people can't stand Hillary, listen, Hillary was a ground, she was a trailblazer too. She yeah. went out and of course she got more votes than Obama because it was this wave. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. You then hit Joe Biden and you're like, so that guy got more enthusiasm than both of them? <laughs> Something just doesn't feel right to me. That's all. It's I'm like Stevie Wonder killed more deer with a bow and arrow this year than Ted Nugent. It just doesn't <laughs> seem right. It, it's something suspicious about this claim. Yeah. <laughs> Can I question that? Am I allowed to ask? <laughs> but we love Stevie Wonder. He has enriched our lives with one of the most yes. soulful soundtracks. We we worship Stevie Wonder all the yeah. way back to Fingertips Part One and Two. I say, come on, come on, I say, come on, come on, I say, come on, come on, come on. I say, you want me to? If you want me to, I'm gonna sing a song, yeah. I mean, that was so inspiring. This live yeah. eleven-year-old kid that sounded like the god of thunder and soul and to this yeah. day even though he's been manipulated and his politics have gone about as blind as his eyeballs uh, we still worship his gifts his talents and his work ethic we always Absolutely. emphasize that those successful people didn't fall into it he's worked his ass off so totally. we love him but we can also tease <laughs> well, you can, yeah. I mean, you have the right to say what you want, and, and I have the right to say, hey, yep, easy. I have a right to say that. It's fine. You I'm know your suspicion. Up. I think I'd like to emphasize when I hear something that's really emphatic, I'd like to spotlight it. And you said you're a naturally suspicious person. I am. In the history of mankind, probably the most important job of a man who takes risks and, and makes sacrifices to be in the asset column, especially in this young experiment in self-government, we began to experiment in self-government because back in England and when we came to the new land, people were suspicious that we should continue this king crap, that the king should have all the rights and the people don't get any rights and the king's henchmen can do as they please to the people. So suspicion is a mandatory role of an yeah. America. We sh and it's called critical thinking. When you hear something that instinctively sounds stupid, you need to demand support and evidence to, 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 it, to uh, righteous this claim by anyone in authority. So uh, not to the point of being jaded, though we're close, but suspicion is a good trait. When your daughter brings home a guy and his crotch is wet, you have the right to be suspicious if he's got a shitty eating grin on his face. And even if he doesn't, all fathers should be suspicious of all boyfriends. And I'd like to right. implement that into the world of our uh, politics. <laughs> but speaking of uh, uh, suspicion, we have the rights and the freedoms to uh, demand accountability from our elected employees and to be suspicious of decrees and uh, mandates that uh, elected employees pull out of their ass, we have that freedom because warriors paid for that freedom. And we've often repeated on the Ted Nugent Spirit Campfire with my buddy John, that freedom is not free. And we've had a lot of hero warriors of the US military from every branch and every element of uh, the warrior world, the sheepdogs. And to each and every one, John, I think this is one of the inspirations that you have really fallen in love with regarding the outdoors, even though you already yeah. knew that nature healed, you knew that fishing and utilization with respect and garlic and butter of wildlife resources was as natural as breathing. But here's a guy just like Joey Jones and, and Tim and all the guys that we've had on, these warriors, whether they were brought up in the outdoors or they ended up in the outdoors to heal themselves physically mm -hmm. and spiritually, my buddy, my hunting buddy, my warrior hero, and just a great shit kicker who happens to be really funny, by the way, which is more important than all the other stuff. John Wayne Walding, born on the 4th of July in Gross Beck, right down the road here, uh, Texas, is our guest tonight on the Spirit Campfire. And I would like to say, welcome, John. Merry Christmas. And tell everybody how delicious Axis backstraps are. 
Well, with an introduction like that, uh, you'd think I'd be a lot taller than I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, thank you all so much for having me. And uh, speaking of being a hunting buddy, Ted, I can't. You, this is totally unplanned, but I had Axe's backstrap for dinner tonight. So, and, John, uh, I had Axe's burger with sautéed onions and garlic and celery and jalapenos and red potato shrapnel. I don't just slice them into slices. I turn all that stuff into shrapnel. Tell me how you prepared your Axis backstrap, yeah. by the way. I, I love that you asked me that question because I'm excited about it as you are. So I got this, you know, I, I live by the creed that I'm dumb, so I know I'm dumb, but that almost makes me smart. Yes, right? both of us. John <laughs> so qualifies I, that too. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. so what do I do that's gonna make it easy for me to have my backstrap the best that I can make, because I know I'm too dumb to make it like emerald wood or any type of uh, guy Fieri. So I have a, a machine called a sous vide machine. And it's basically, you put it in a bag and you put it in the water and that sous vide machine cooks it to perfection. And oh. how I prepare it, I put garlic in it, I put butter in it. I have a little seasonal salt from my buddies at Local Yokel that make up a, a camo edition for venison, you know, seasoning. And I smoke it for a uh, 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 sous vide for about two hours at 128 precise degrees. Once that finished, I put it on the uh, cast iron skillet and I sear it on each side. And, and then I cut it up nice and thin. And Ted, let me tell you, tonight, it, it, to put it like the president would, it was phenomenal. Well, I got to tell you, John, I want you to meet my buddy, John Brankus. He's my co-host yep. on the Spirit Campfire. And he and I and you share all the positive attitudes and spirits that is the American dream. And John has done the research on what you have gone through, Mr. Yeah. Walding. And uh, I know on behalf of everybody watching the Spirit Campfire, and I know John's going to carry it from here, but we thank you. And we are moved by your defiant, inspirational positive energy and attitude you one-legged son of a bitch you make the rest of us uh look like we're groveling so break yeah. us meet walding well listen thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for your service um you know just You're in my it. research of everything that you've done the, obviously the thing that stands out is so i want to i want to hear from you you're wounded you press on and continue to fight and what I want to know is, what's the? Did you know you were wounded? Did it occur to you? Does it? Did did quit? Does quit ever enter your mind, or are you so focused and so in the moment that it it was just part of what you were doing, and there there is no quit. This is a great question, and Waldin, tell him the gory details how your leg was basically gone and you had to tie it on to keep fighting. <laughs> Yeah, I want, I want, to I hear, want the yeah, listener, I, I want John to hear this story because we all right. go through some shit in our lives, but what you did would make the rest of us get through the shit better. Yeah, I, I need to hear this. Well, I, I, first of all, I'd like to say that that uh, uh, before I start, I'm no different than either, either one of you. I just did the best that I could in the situation that God had put me in that day, right? So when I got shot... I, you know, yes, my name's John Wayne. I was born on the 4th of July, Green Beret, all this great stuff. But I did everything that a human would do. Yeah, I didn't quit, but I didn't just grab my beret and rub it on my leg and tell my sergeant I didn't have time to bleed, right? You know, I was in a firefight uh, April uh, April 6th of 2008, and it was on a kill capture mission in the mountains of Afghanistan, basically, you know, in snow, right? Because it was the early April up at 10,000 feet above sea level. I was a lead salt uh, team one leader and we were climbing this mountain. You know, th there's no uh, ADA accessible handrails and stairs or escalators to get up this thing. We're climbing goat paths all the way up to the top of this thing. And and uh, you can imagine as an element would be Green Beret team of only about 10 to 15 guys and some Afghanis attached to us, you know, the Afghani commandos, you know, we, we I was probably, I don't know, 40 meters from my position to the first house into this objective and and we got opened up on it. and when i say we got opened up on i did it with you know it was with an avalanche of gunfire and i don't say that to beat my chest and try to sound cool to say you know that, that it's something that it wasn't that's the reality and, and to put it into perspective within the first five minutes of the round going off first round fired we had our lead interpreter ck which you think an american's worth a lot in afghanistan what about an afghani 
that speaks English and helps Americans, right? So CK was a great, great per, uh, patriot for Americans, and, and he got shot in the throat, died on impact. Dylan Bear was a Green Beret RTO, radio transmitting operator, got shot in the, in the hip. Initial session on him was 20 minutes to live. Luis Morales, the, the Foxtrot, right, the intel officer for uh, our detachment, he was shot in the leg not once but twice. And uh, I never will forget hearing him call me over the radio, John, come get me, brother. You know, that was with the first five minutes of the firefight. And I came back down from my position and initiated pretty much Operation Human Shield, right? It was my job to catch those bullets while Ron Shure, our medic, kept Dylan and Luis alive. And, and that worked for a little bit for probably a couple hours. And, and after about two and a half to three hours into the six and a half hour firefight, I was moving from one position to the next to get a better vantage point and I uh, got shot right below my right leg, my right knee, and I fell forward and rolled over and my leg was just hanging at a 45 degree angle, holding on only by an inch of flesh. You know, and I never will forget the, the shock of that feeling like somebody just hit you with a chainsaw, you know, and, and feeling that rush of adrenaline and, and just out, you know, absolute the most pain that I've ever felt in my life. And I also felt just like the redneck from Grosbeck, like Ted said, you know, I never will forget looking down at my leg and just seeing the little blood spurt out. And I thought, man, this looks just like the movies. I'll be damned. Spielberg got it right. <laughs> you know, and uh, so at, <laughs> at, at that point, I realized that, you know, I, you know, it, blood's got to go round and round and air's got to go in and out. And so at that point, I put my tourniquet on with the help of Dave Sanders. And we could watch that blood just go out slower and slower and slower until the blood stopped. And uh, I kept fighting. And, and every time that I moved, I realized that my leg would just get caught on something. And to Ted's point, I actually at one point had to grab my leg by the boot and fold it up and put it in my crotch and tie it to my thigh. And that's how I got off the mountain was literally carrying my leg down the mountain. Oh my God. Now we're talking while this is going on, you're returning fire, you're doing tactical reloads, you're, you're slithering for cover, you're doing all the things of survival instinct and emphatically trained with. Are, 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 are you, is, is the tractor beam focus, is, I, I, I'm obviously asking a rhetorical question, but yeah. the, the focus, have you ever experienced a, a, a focus demand or did you ever anticipate a focus demand like that? And how did you handle it? Ted, we don't anticipate it. We train for it, right? That's you know you're, you're planning on it. Wow. Absolutely. We don't plan for things to go right. As Green Berets, we plan yeah. for things to go right, wrong. You know, that, that you eloquent uh, a statement that Mike Tyson always says, everybody has a plan to get punched in the mouth. We get trained by punching in the mouth, right? An amateur practices to get it right. Mm. We practice to get it wrong, right? What that's happens it, whenever... I, I, I'm so glad you're saying that. It's like I've always said when people ask me about the Second Amendment. I merely stop and I go, do you have a fire extinguisher in your house? Do you have more than one? Exactly. Do you have a spare tire in your trunk? Do you, do you go buy a spare tire when you get the flat? Do you go to Ace Hardware and get a fire extinguisher? when the flames erupt. So I, that's a civilian version of a, a special ops, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Look, on that six and a half hours, there were 70 danger close airstrikes. There was two medals of honor awarded. There was eight silver stars. There were eight purple hearts. And the best statistic out of all of that, right, 250 to 200 Taliban or, you know, Islamic radical extremists up against, you know, 10 to 15 Green Berets we had zero American killed. Wow. That's yeah. how we trained, right? We John. trained to get punched in the mouth. So, John, I, we, I did a, a TV show called Fight Science, and we had Green Beret snipers on. Um, and you, you went on to become a Green Beret sniper. And I, I want to tell you a test that we did that still blows my mind is we had, and we couldn't, we actually couldn't disclose uh, the identity of the sniper that we had, but we had him sitting in a box. Do I have like the a, little black bar? <laughs> exactly. We had black bar, put the mask identity. on the whole thing. Yeah, so yeah. He anyway, he's sitting, he's sitting uh with his rifle and he's in a uh you y'all can look it up. It's fight science. Yeah, type in sniper. So what we did is we dumped scorpions, cockroaches, 
everything you could onto his face and he has his mat his his uh you know his his covering on and underneath the mask are cockroaches on his nose is a scorpion and he's sitting there and his heart rate does not change he's shooting just as his heart decompresses before it inflates so that there's no sh no shake and wiggle we're throwing ice we're making the box 130 degree we're doing everything <laughs> you possibly can do to distract someone never misses the bullseye that civilians sort of dedication. have no idea how deadly the United States military, specifically Green Beret snipers, are. They have right. no idea. Ta so tell I have an idea. That. Yeah, well, Ted, <laughs> you Ted knows all idea. about it, and the audience may not. Tell me about the kind of concentration. You're always talking about planning for when things go wrong. I mean, you, you, you see some, you know, a, a professional athlete, like at the free throw line, and somebody yells boo, and they miss a free throw. You got a rifle in your hand, you throw scorpions at someone's face, and it doesn't phase them. <laughs> right. Well, you know, this is kind of a twofold question. First, we find comfort in discomfort, right? That's just in our nature. No, it isn't necessarily a marksmanship attitude. It's just a culture that we live in. You know, uh, you've heard the term embrace the suck, right? That's what we live. That's what we learn. That's what we truly do is, you know, we if it sucks, we make it suck more because you literally do train as you fight. I know what it's like on that mountain in Afghanistan and what hard, how hard it was going to be. In fact, whenever I, I actually became the first amputee, you know, to ever graduate Green Beret Sniper School, right? And, and whenever I was training for that, Shock Valley, that mountain, that was my beacon on how fit I need to be and on how my mindset need to be. You know, so you have that embrace the suck culture. And then the other one is just repetition. You know, Ted talks about this all the time. You know, it's, it's actually so eloquent to hear him speak about every time he makes that bow shot and just how simplistic of a warrior mindset you have to have. You know, we call it brilliance at the basics, right? There's no secret handshake. There's no curving the bullet. It's just doing the basics well under pressure, right? We just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, bring up the suck, shoot and shoot and shoot, bring up the suck, shoot and shoot and so forth. And that's what makes us, you know, the, uh, the, the competent war fighters that we've, we are. You know what you're talking about there, Walding? Uh, everybody squawks, uh, we're all equal, we're all equal, we're all the same. I mean, no, we're not. We're not all equal, Not we're not all the same. Um, there's a select mindset. You know, you might get a six foot two guy that's pretty solid, and he can bench press X, and he can run X, and he can accomplish certain things. But the reason there's such a small percentage of individuals that attain the level of Green Beret or Navy SEAL or Delta Force or some of these other special ops. We in the civilian world, you know, I've been hanging around you guys long enough that I think I, I grasp it pretty good for a guitar player, but I use the term samurai, out of body. Um, I not just focus. I use the term tractor beam. For example, my, the closest thing I've had to have scorpions and uh, and cockroaches shoved in my face while I'm trying to hit the bullseye, is on stage. These beautiful, firm young girls will get undressed while I'm playing, and I just keep playing all the right notes. Now that's not the same kind of challenge, but I'd like it's to probably think probably worse. The, the <laughs> fact that I the fact that I succeeded. May, I probably wouldn't make a green beret, but I could probably load your gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you can load it better than most. But you, you're absolutely right. That That's how we do train. It is that, that super focused. It, it's not tunnel vision by any means, right? But it is super focused that, that we learn over and over and over again. It's just, again, brilliant. They beat those basics into us, and we learn how to apply them whether the heart rate's at 180, whether it's 180 outside, whether it's, you know, minus 80 inside, whatever it is, they just teach us how to, you know, embrace the suck and, and just get super, it just flows down and make that accurate, well-placed shot. It's an interesting dichotomy. And John Brankus and I have talked about this a lot of times with people who are really good at their gigs, that famous wrestling gal, the Marine that we had on, what's her name, John? Lacey Evans. Yes, L Lacey. Um, so many of our guests have had this. But, John, it, in my, I'll never claim to be a warrior. I'll never claim to be the, the, the sheep dog, though I do in my little, my little sheep factor. I do a pretty good job. But it's like 
definitive focus, not tractor beam, because while you're focused on that aim small, miss small, there's a situational awareness that you aspire to be omniscient, 360. Right. You can be looking right into the between the eyes where you got to shoot that guy, but you also got to be cognizant of your surroundings for an intruder outside of that tractor beam. Is that a pretty good civilian explanation of what we're talking about? No, it, it's absolutely, you know, to put it in your context, you don't just look at an animal, you look at a hair that's just behind that front shoulder, that yes. specific small hair, just like I would look at someone's eyelashes through a scope, right? Or I'd look at a piece of kit walking into a, a room and I would pick out something specific, like all this chaos, flashbangs going off, you had a door charge coming in, smoke's all in the room, you got guys behind you, now you have a guy pointing at you, you know, pointing a gun at you. It all just really comes into focus. You know what's going on to your left and right, but I can see the sweat bead on his forehead, just like I can see that tick on that axis right there whenever I shot it. You know, you were surrounded by heroes on Shock Mountain. Tell, tell John and the listeners at Spirit Campfire, the viewers, um, the heroes that saved your life, the heroes that, that got you back in working order, and the obstacles, the psychological obstacle course that you endured during that period. Uh, absolutely. Well, first of all, the, the, the men of Special Forces Operational Attachment Alpha 3336, my, my brothers in arms at ODA 3336, I owe my life to, right? Mm -hmm. That's Scott Ford, that's Ryan Wallen, that's Dylan Bear, that's Matt Williams, that's Ron Schur, that's Dave Sanders, that's CK that died, that's all the interpreters and all the Afghanis. You know, I didn't do anything heroic. I just didn't quit that day. Those men that Matt Williams climbed the mountain after we got shot and helped get us out there, you know, again, dragging me down and, and Ron Schur that helped me uh, rest his soul. He actually passed away from cancer this year. You know, but him, you know, being the medic, keeping me alive and, and you know, Ryan keeping me uh, all the the the, the fire on whenever because he's at the base of the mountain as we were on the side of it trapped, you know, and all of the men that, uh, that were flying the AA-10 Warthogs at the time and, and uh, you know, the, the UH-60 pilot, literally we had a UH-60 pilot got shot. You know, that was my first medevac bird. It got shot. The second medevac bird. We got on, it got shot down. We had to do emergency landing. So our third bird had to come in. So, hmm. you know, from the immediate assistance of getting out of there, you know, I thank God every day that he surrounded me about around a lot of people a lot better than I am. You know, moving forward, I never will forget, to your point, those that helped me get it, you know, get better. You know, the, the men and women in the Walter Reed Medical Center that just absolutely care nothing about more than helping the soldiers that come in and, and are lose, lost limbs and eyes, sights and, and any type of, uh, you know, ailment that comes in there. You know, yeah, you've heard term, you know, all these, you know, reports that news play people want to talk about this and that, but I'm telling you right now, Walter Reed is one of the best medical institutions on the planet to get better. You know, and quite frankly, my family, I got to give it, you know, God first, by the way, I guess I should start with saying if I wasn't, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. You know, I know firsthand what it's like to die, right? You know, I actually did die a couple times whenever I, or flatline, whatever it is. And, and I, I never will forget with my back on that battlefield, giving it up to God and saying, I, it's in your hands, right? I, and for him to allow me to keep living, that's just a humbling, you know, validation that he's in charge, not me. And it's let me do the best that I can. Because I had a lot of why me's, let's be real, right? Who, who, you know, 26, 27-year-old Green Beret that can jump out of airplanes, climb mountains, do anything that I can, you know, now I can't, right? Whenever I was staring at those ceiling tiles in Bagram, I never will forget me procrastinating. I didn't want to look down because I knew that next moment that I look down, I'm going to be one-legged. And whenever I looked down and I saw only five toes sticking out, you know, I... Um, I cried. I did everything that a normal human being would do. And, and uh, you know, that's when I learned that meaning that I can't forever, as hard as I ever try for the rest of my, yes, I did, you know, I was the first Green Beret to graduate, you know, sniper school. I've ran marathons. I've done death marches. I've been very fortunate and blessed that God's allowed me to do a lot of stuff with the aid of a prosthetic device, right? So, you know, learning that word can't, you know, uh, God, my family, you know, my wife and kids being behind me was definitely one of those uh, 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 absolute necessities of me overcoming that injury. And the third thing is, you know, you. 
Americans, right? To, to never underestimate the magnitude of what the two words thank you mean to a veteran. Because believe me, if this was in the Vietnam era, I wouldn't be on your show. Well, I'd be on your show, make no mistake about it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right, but uh, you know, culturally, we were nowhere near embraced of that bear hug of thank you that I've gotten from veterans, you know, from civilians and, and people that just from the bottom of their heart, you know, want to say thank you. And, and, you know, transitioning into hunting, right? Hunting almost saved my life. You know, yes, my wife, my wife and kids, and, and they helped me stay motivated, you know, sobriety. I know you're a sober man, you know, quitting drinking and everything was the best, the absolute best gift that I've ever given myself. And I sure wish that we could make that, you know, more known through our community, right? This operator community where you're supposed to, you know, pour one for the homies and drink for the fallen. Bull crap. If your life matters that much to him, to them, well, by God, you owe it to them to live well. You know, mm -hmm. and after my buddy was murdered, I lived that. You know, I woke up that next morning and I said, enough. I'm not going to be good, but I'm going to be great. And, and I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to go on a bear hunt in Alaska, right? First of all, as you know, I'm a redneck from Grosbeck, Texas. You know, my first memory, my dad was seeing him walk across me in chains going to the courthouse to go to jail while my mom was already in jail. You know, so I was raised by my grandparents. And, and my point is, I didn't come from a lot. And going to Alaska on a brown bear hunt was not even in my stratosphere, right? That's not something I could ever even think of. And to have a vet, you know, a civilian say, I care about your sacrifice, come hunt with me. You know, so that was that validation. That's why whenever you say thank you to me, I don't say you're welcome. I say you're worth it, right? You're worth this leg that'll never grow back, right? You're worth the holidays that I miss and the brothers that are embroidered on this center console on my truck that are dead. You know, so that validation helped me get better and become who I am today. And the second thing that hunt did, it got that hamster back on the wheel because make no mistake about it, gentlemen. Yeah, I'm big, bad, green beret, but when you learn that word can't, there's some insecurities that automatically come in, and you're like, man, I can't do this, right? And this was before I went to the uh, cypher school. This is before I did everything. That A bear hunt was the first thing that I did in the field after getting shot and being medevac from Afghanistan and getting through the bush plains and crawling through that bush and getting the right shot placement. Oh, it was the most spiritual, absolutely beneficial thing I've ever done, and I will forever be in debt to the gentleman that took me on there, and I will forever try to give that to the veteran behind me. Great, great summary. Great spirit of the wild reminder that no matter how much you get blown up in life, you got to thank God, family, country. Absolutely. Hey, if my life sucks, the guy that shot me wins, and he ain't going to freaking win. So every good experience I have is a middle finger of the guy that shot me. Jeez. Uh, John, I can't thank you enough for i mean saying thank you for your service is just such the, the word seems so small next to what you actually have done cannot thank you enough and i can't thank you for just pressing on and sharing your gift with the world i mean i know you do lots of motivational speaking um how can people get in touch with you so that you can continue to to spread the good word yeah, that's a very good question. The, the quick answer, Ted always beats me over the back of the head when I tell him this. I'm not on any social media, so that's not how you get a hold of me. <laughs> I, I'll say I live in, in reality, not virtual reality. Yeah, I live yeah. in deer stands and on the side of mountains and chasing some of God's creation. But no, you can get in touch with me. You know, I do have a website. That's my closest thing to being like a Navy SEAL. I haven't written a book yet. I'm working on my hair. You know, I don't have a publisher like <laughs> SEAL do. That's right, insane. but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, yeah, John Brakus, if they want to get a hold of John Wayne Walding, go to my website, we'll hook them up. But bottom yeah, line, exactly. yeah. what's the name yeah. of that book, John, where your experience is documented and they uh, reviewed that? So, there was a, a couple books that's been out. One was that there was specifically about Shock Valley, it was called No Way Out. And it, the, the most recent book that featured myself was uh, Pete Hexes' book that just came out with. Fox News called Modern Warriors. Yeah, Modern Warriors. It's a great book. I've got it, and you'll you'll yeah. never put it down. Well, Walden, God bless you. It was great to share a campfire with you. And I know we're going to do a lot more. Brankus is uh, getting bitten by the spirit of the wild. I ultimate, am. 
uh, cleansing of the uh, deer hunt. He's uh, already gone pheasant hunting, and he did go and deer uh, hunting. hunting and got skunked, which is really important to get skunked. But we're going to have Joey <laughs> Jones and a bunch of heroes here at the ranch sometime this winter. And uh, hopefully, Walding, you can join Brankus and I and share that campfire. It's really right. special when I'm with you, man. Hey, don't you threaten me with a good time. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much, John. God bless you. You're worth it. God well, bless. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank, and I got to tell you, Walden, uh, that story and your articulation of your experiences, um, I know it struck a chord with everybody because I am everybody and everybody is me, the shit kickers, the, uh, the, the great families out there. We live by truth, logic, common sense, God, family, country, constitution, bill of rights, 10 commandments, golden rule, law and order, all that controversial <laughs> stuff. And your story... It, it, it's our story in various ways, because everybody's got a mountain to climb. Everybody gets Absolutely. a leg blown off, figuratively speaking, sometimes literally speaking. So thanks for sharing it, because you, you, you deliver it and project it with uh, an authority, uh, a sense of, uh, I won't be knocked down. I referenced the man in the arena, and man, were you in the arena, and you stood back up, you dusted yourself off, and you remain in the asset column and a positive force to reckon with. And uh, I just wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Veterans Day, Happy Independence Day, every day of your life, John. Yeah. Well, thank you back so much, Ted. You know, from the bottom of my heart, you do not know what it means to have your friendship and, and your validation of my service, and, and I will forever earn it. Right, I will for every single day earn that friendship, and and I'm just a a, a patriot and, and humbled, you know, husband, father, and and, and uh, God bless y'all, and have a merry Christmas. To and you. everybody at the Spirit Campfire, yeah. we thank you because we we know you, we love you, we uh, we appreciate you, yeah. and uh, we stand with you, spirit to spirit, man. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, All right. Thank you. See, so Ted, every uh, time, gotta, brother. Every time, listen, every time, every guest, every time. We haven't had a clunker yet. We only it's have amazing monster. people. It's I, I have a hard time uh, controlling my emotions because I, I can yeah. see and hear and smell the elements of that very painful story and how he phoenixed, how he rose up. Oh, and, John, that has been a consistent, hasn't it? It, it has. And, and this is, you know, I realize that all of our own experiences are only relative to us. Yeah. Right. So the darkest day that you've had or the darkest day that I have had is equal to the darkest day that everybody else has had. Yes. With yeah. all that being said, if you can remove your own, you know, your own uh, subjective point of view and say, have you ever tried to get down a hill while holding your leg in your lap? <laughs> like I, that, I've, that's never happened to me. And I can I can say that as traumatic as the most traumatic thing has been in my life, that trumps it. Yeah. just does yeah and joey jones lost both legs and so many yeah. that didn't make it back and i remember in uh, fallujah and uh kandahar and tikrit and taji and and uh, all over the hell zone there when toby keith and i stood on that 120 degree tarmac yeah. and we had to hold the salute for the longest period of time and i'll tell you i cried like a baby yeah it was a parade of flag draped coffins so when i when i exalt and decree and exclaim that freedom is not free i was there when uh private uh first class uh, eric balding was on that gurney with a rpg right through his chest john mm. and toby keith and i stood in the in his blood as he died he was from austin texas and uh lieutenant colonel eric mccray who uh, uh, I came home with his remains. So, so I, I get a little emotional. And when I, uh, when I think and, and, and utilize the freedom that they gave me, that's why Ted Nugent is a hell raiser, because I saw the price, I see the price, I smell the price, I, I wipe the price off my boots. And uh, if I think some elected employee is breaking his oath to the Constitution, that those flag draped coffins paid for, I insist on being a force to reckon with. That's why I'm like Absolutely. I am, John. Yep. Uh, so, Ted, we are going to close out this show before uh, this is our last show before Christmas, and you are allowing me to uh, play a video. Yes, I want to see this video. Yes. <laughs> 
Do you want to see the video and then I you do. can react yes. to it? Because I think you're really going to like it. I do. I, anything All Greg right. has done this Christmas Eve, this is the time right here. Merry All Christmas. Right. This is everybody. it. So listen to me. Listen to me. Everybody, this is not in the, this is not, uh, this is not belong on the Ted Nugent show, but it does belong on the Spirit Campfire because this Christmas song that my wife and I wrote, I wrote all the music, played all the instruments. Awesome. My wife sang and we did it. Uh, we did a music video with ESPN Sports Science. There's millions of views. You can check it out on YouTube. And it charted at number 30, which was pretty amazing for an unsigned band. So Herbert, cue this up. We're going to play Christmas is my favorite time of year. Check this out. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from the entire ESPN Sports Science family. Christmas is my favorite time of year. Merry Christmas! Absolutely stunning! What a what, what an orgy of imagery, and I won't I won't identify the most 
exciting part of it is your wife. She is so beautiful. It's stupid. But all the different Im imagery, dunking the, the cookie in the milk and Santa Claus, that, that was absolutely brilliant. That must have took you forever. That's quite an endeavor. It was it was really fun. You know, it, it was, uh, Ted, you, you have uh, every... Every time that I, I hear all, you know, legendary musicians talking about writing a song in like two minutes, he has sat down. That chord progression actually is the same chord progression as Run Like Hell by Pink Floyd when, and, and David Gilmore is one of my favorite guitarists. And I just slowed it down and played it a certain way. And I was like, hey, I literally called my wife and said, I think I wrote a Christmas song. Turns out she trained with the uh, Long Beach Opera Company and can sing her ass off. And I didn't even know it, we were 10 years into marriage. So she penned these lyrics, wrote this together. We had an incredible staff at uh, for sports science. And we got, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm so blessed to have incredible relationships. We put together this awesome video and it did really well. And it's, it's something I feel very blessed to be a part of. It was really, really brilliant. I'm a Christmassy old fart. I love all things Christmassy and kids and funny and cute mm -hmm. and all the imagery and the Santa Clauses and stuff. So I really salute you. That was a rock solid 10, mostly because of your wife, but ultimately <laughs> with all those guys singing along. And by the way, I'm going to make sure that the uh, publishing company contacts your lawyer because I think Pink Floyd has a lawsuit here. They have. It's the same, you know. I mean, if you can, if you can, uh, if you can copyright a one, four, five progression, <laughs> we're all in trouble. I guess so. Well, break us a very Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Once again, thank you everybody for a wonderful year. What is next Monday? Monday is uh, post Christmas, just before New Year's. And we will see you on Monday, the 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. A big thank you to uh, Patriot Mobile. We don't want to forget why we even have a Spirit Campfire. Patriot Mobile, please investigate what they offer because what we're delivering here, John and I, we have core beliefs, God, family, country, work ethic, uh, positive energy, positive spirit, being in the asset column for our family, our community, our country, our fellow man, the good earth. And, and that's what this Spirit Campfire is always celebrated. And I'd like to think that John Wayne Waldy's message along with so many of our guests, is a reminder that we all have an unlimited spirit inside of us, and we can do anything. If John can create that Christmas video, <laughs> it's, it took, we all it's, have hope forever. Way more in, involved than I would have wanted to be. So that's a perfect example in John Wayne Walding's story, obviously. But Brankus has been a real pleasure doing this Spirit Campfire. It's really a stream of consciousness. It's uninhibited. It's raw. It's primal. It's real. It's honest. It's positive. We're not afraid of the negative. We articulate some really important and 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 proven methods to reduce and hopefully eliminate the negatives out there. But thank you everybody for this spirit campfire and coming on my Facebook. Be sure you spread the word because there are evil forces that run this high tech world and they hate family. They hate God. They hate country. They hate freedom. They hate self-defense. They hate law and order. They hate goodwill and they hate decency. And if you think that's an outrageous statement, just look what they're doing, how they're suppressing and censoring people because we disagree with their Marxist agenda. But I'm going to get off that really nasty identification right now and just finish it up by saying Merry Christmas to everybody. Remember, it's the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And we should pivot on that attitude and that yep. spirit. And we should be as positive as we can possibly be to everyone in our life and spread that positive energy, wave to people, smile at people, pull down your mask and smile before you put it back up. Thank you for this incredible positive spirit on the Spirit Campfire. And Brankus, I hope you and your family have a, the greatest Christmas of your life. I promise I am going to. Absolutely. And everybody, just be the spirit of Christmas. That's the gift. Just be the spirit. Yep. Like you don't have to go out and buy everybody stuff. Just be present, happy, positive, an asset, not a liability. Be the spirit of Christmas. We can't thank you enough for joining us. We are looking forward to an awesome 2021. Uh, we, have, we have one more show before the turn of the year, and I think we're going to do a special countdown show. Got to talk to you about it, Ted. I think we got some really good stuff.
I bet you, man. John, thank you so much. Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you, Patriot Mobile. Thank you, everybody on my Facebook, all the positive and funny, cocky stuff. You people are really funny and cocky, and I really admire funny and cocky. Great video, John. Thanks for sharing that. Right. And I'll see you here a week from today. Have, have a very, very Merry Christmas, everybody. God bless, everyone. See you.